The last common way that we can find our enthalpy of reaction is by applying something called Hess's law. When we think about reactions, whether we're breaking them down into reaction mechanisms or just thinking about the reactants turning into products, we can think of it as a step-by-step -step process where we are requiring energy to break each and every bond, and each bond that is formed is releasing energy. We could use bond energies, we can use enthalpy of formations to know how that happens throughout the process and to put it together to know for a specific reaction. Internal energy, or for our purposes, more importantly, enthalpy are defined as state functions. State functions are values that depend on the state of the system, not how we arrived at that state. Uh, the best metaphor for this would be elevation. If you're climbing a mountain, doesn't matter whether you went straight up, whether you helicoptered in, or whether you took a big zigzag path back and forth, your elevation is the same regardless of the way you got there based upon how high above the ground you are. That helps us to apply or to calculate our enthalpy in different ways. The definition as a state function is what allows us to take experimental data, apply bond energies to no delta H, apply enthalpies of formation to no delta H, or to apply what's known as Hess's law to find delta H. So enthalpy um, is dependent on the exact reaction we're looking at, obviously. So when we have a reaction that releases heat, if I were to reverse that reaction, the opposite or the reverse reaction would require heat. So if I am looking at a reaction and its opposite process, they have opposite signs, but the same value on delta H. If I have twice as many reactants going on throughout the process to make twice as many products, that's breaking twice as many bonds and making twice as many bonds, so twice as much energy is exchanged, or the delta H would be doubled. So when I multiply a reaction or when I'm changing my coefficients, it would also change my value of delta H. Those two ideas are put together when and applied in a concept called Hess's Law, saying that if I were to combine two or more reactions and they can be combined to give an overall change or overall chemical reaction, the individual delta H steps that are added up give us the overall delta H. One example right here is a simple reaction of if A reacts with 2B to make C and C makes two Ds, then A plus 2B could make two Ds in terms of a combined reaction. And that enthalpy change for this process would be the sum of those two enthalpy changes. What we're trying to do with Hess's law is kind of put puzzle pieces together in different ways to see how we can get our overall reaction and see how we can get our overall delta H. Another example here would be showing that when methane reacts with oxygen, it can do an incomplete combustion, which gives us carbon monoxide and water, but some leftover oxygen, which releases some energy. And when that carbon monoxide reacts with the remaining oxygen, it releases even more heat, giving us our complete combustion to CO2. So the overall process is the sum of the two smaller or shorter processes. When we're doing Hess's law, it's really important that all of our reactants and products truly do combine and cancel. We wanna check our stoichiometry. There are other concepts in chemistry, net ionic equations and reaction mechanisms, which have us combine reactions in some of the same ways, electrochemistry, for example. And in all cases, we need to make sure that we are correctly combining, that we are looking at coefficients, that we are have reactants and products on the correct side, um, maybe even an oxidation reduction reaction by half the half reaction process, for example. As we're doing that in terms of delta H, we are also thinking about any manipulation to an equation to make it work for our scenario 
also helps to that delta H. This can appear in multiple choice or free response, and we need to be ready not only to do it, but also to be able to explain it, apply it, and show it in a step-by-step -step process. These examples are very important for you to look at and follow through. I have given two very simple scenarios here, but down here we have things with changing coefficients, multiple reactants and multiple products, and it's only when you've applied this and applied it a few times that you truly understand the strategies required and the steps required. So maybe more important than many of the other straightforward equations, this process is going to take repetition, it's going to take practice, and it's going to take a little bit of a different problem-solving process.